Have you ever looked at an entry-level job description and you see that it asks for two years of experience? What the f Now, it doesn't make it right and it doesn't mean I agree, but in this video, I'm going to give you the employer's perspective of why they do things like this and why it's so damn hard to land your first job as a software developer. And then I wanna give you some tips and encouragement for surviving 2023 persevering and getting to that first coding job. I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry, where we teach people how to code the right way. The reason that companies put a couple years of experience on their job description is that training up an entry level developer takes time. It typically takes six to 12 months on your first job for you to become productive. And it's not your fault. You learn the coding basics. Everybody learns those coding basics, but nothing can really prepare you for an enterprise coding environment. We're talking millions of lines of code. We're talking dozens or hundreds of developer teams. Some companies have thousands of developers all working in the same code bases. That is just not something an academic environment can simulate or prepare you for. And then on top of that, you have to learn all the domain rules. You have to learn the code base. You have to study what's going on. You often also need the time of one or more mentors. So it's not just your salary that they're paying, it's the salaries of those mentors. So bringing on a new developer who is entry level is incredibly expensive and it's incredibly risky. But that's also kind of encouraging because if you do get that first job and you do get that experience, one thing that you'll find is once you get to that one to two years of experience and you start to become that mid-level programmer, recruiters will be banging your door down trying to recruit you to other companies because you're a much lower risk once you've experienced those environments. In a lot of the forums and social posts online, you see these entry-level developers and coding bootcamp graduates, and they're bragging and they're saying, I just landed a $90,000 job, or I just landed six figures in my first job. And that's great. We're really happy for them. But my advice to beginners is you really shouldn't care about that first salary. What you should care about is getting quality mentorship and quality experience. Because if you get those two things, the money is going to come. Don't worry about the money up front. So that being said, a lot of entry level developers will ask me, well, if the job descriptions all say one to two years experience, should I even bother applying? And the answer is yes, because if nobody's hiring entry level developers, then there's no supply of one to two year experienced individuals. What they might be trying to do is signal that they don't have a lot of time to mentor or train an entry-level developer. So what I recommend doing is applying and then doing a lot of networking. And if you can network your way into the company and into the IT shop specifically and demonstrate to those employees that you know enough and that you're eager to learn more and you're gonna be realistic about your salary expectations, especially during your initial period, you can sometimes work the system and get in around the HR department and get that first job. Now, networking on LinkedIn is great. Going to meetup groups is great. Going to free local conferences is great. Those are all ways that you can go out and meet developers and communicate with them and explain to them why you deserve a chance. And while you're going through this job search and networking process, it's very important that you come up with a passion project to work on to demonstrate your skills. Do not put a GitHub portfolio up for somebody to see that has a to-do list in React that came from a tutorial like everybody else has. You should come up with something that is important to you, interesting to you. It doesn't even have to be in the domain of the company, but you need to be able to speak to designing and implementing your own application and what that's like, the mistakes you made, the lessons learned. If you can bring that to the table, you will be far ahead 
of standard applicants that are coming out of a boot camp or coming out of a college program because they tend to all have the same applications. Distinguish yourself with your passion. Now I know that if you're out there looking for your first job or you've been displaced early in your career, which is likely in 2023, it's a very discouraging time. But let me give you some encouragement because I've lived through this before. Before the dot-com crash, if you could spell HTML, you could get a $70,000 a year job. And then the dot-com crash happened. And what went on was all of those people who were barely qualified got pushed out of the field. And learning and enrollment at universities started dropping. Well, these companies, the technology doesn't stop. And the work that they need to get done doesn't decrease. It just starts piling up and everybody's holding their breath and they're not hiring enough and they're not staffing for the future. And then finally they reach a breaking point and the economy improves and everybody starts hiring all at the same time again. And there's all this competition and all these jobs available, but there's much less workers because people gave up. People got pushed out of the field. So if you have the grit and the perseverance to keep practicing and keep developing your portfolio and keep developing your skills and networking, when the market comes roaring back, you're going to be just fine because these jobs aren't going away forever. This is just a blip and you just need to ride it out. Happy coding.